strategic work sessions, training, assessments, and job benchmarking tools. Today, Tom's program he will present is titled, How to Make the Most Out of a Changing Business Environment. So now, Tom, I so I appreciate everybody being here today. I'm going to tell you, I am going to have to cut out here fairly uh, fairly soon. I have another meeting on my docket today, uh, which is why Tom is the host. But we'll um, I know he has done a really good just on a personal note outside of his bio he did. He has done a great job for organization for many years. Um, I have been through seen different trainings of Tom's over the years. I know as clients uh, in Plymouth, many which are succeeding because of Tom's work, like Cowden Design. So you're fortunate to uh, to get an hour of Tom's time today and some of the tools that he brings to the table, which are amazing. So Tom, let's get you started up. And Thank he's you. an EMU graduate. Let's not forget that. He is an, He did not put that on his bio. He needs to put that on his bio. I know he does. He. I, I'm okay. All That's right, a, Tom. Thank you. You got to update your bio before yeah. you can come back again. Thanks, Wes. Well, actually, it's uh, my short bio is what I gave Wes today. So it is on my regular bio, Mary. I want you to know that. So. Okay, so let's get started here. What we're gonna do first off, I'm gonna share this screen. We have a nice little PowerPoint that we wanna share with us here today. So with that said, uh, we're gonna get this slideshow rolling. All right, here we go. Okay, so good morning everyone and welcome. Today we're gonna to be discussing something that is happening to everybody in business today and that is a changing business environment. So it reminds me a little bit of this story here. A number of years ago, many years ago, it's a guy by the name of Michelangelo that walked this planet, one of the greatest sculptors, painters, artists that ever lived. And as the story goes, he was out walking one day and he was wheeling this huge block of marble. And off in the distance, one of his friends spied him and said, hey, Mike, I have a question for you. Well, Michelangelo was willing to say every block of marble and he wasn't about to stop. So he kept on rolling along saying, hey, catch up with me if you want to ask me any questions. So sure enough, his friend catches up with him and starts walking alongside of him and said, Michael, how do you do it? How do you take that ugly block of a marble and make a, such a beautiful sculptures? Well, Michelangelo knew he was going to have to do some explaining. So he brought his wheelbarrow to a halt, set it down with a thud, <clears throat> took out his kerchief wiped his brow and said, my friend had just said, you got it all mixed up. <laughs> Where you get these ideas? It says that, that what you just called the, the ugly block of marble, but she's already got that a beautiful sculpture inside of her. All Michelangelo would do is a knock off the rough edges, polish it up and make the real beauty come out. And with that thought in mind, that's exactly what we're doing with this program today. You already have what it takes to shape the future of your company. We've all been seeing the different things that have happened in the last 366 days, whatever it's been. But I want you to know you already have what it takes. We're just gonna help you knock off some of those rough edges, polish it up and uh, really let the real beauty come out. So with that said, now you should have a workbook. We sent out a workbook the other day and I would encourage you if you don't have it to print it off. It's only a couple pages, but what I like to do is I take the philosophy of the faintest ink is better than the best memory. So the way I structure this, I'll give you some words, keywords to jot in the fill in the blank uh, format that I prepared for you here today. So with that said, let's take a look at what else we've got tonight. Uh, it is a little bit like a smorgasbord. I use the word board, uh, literally. Uh, smorgasbord, bunch of ideas I'll share with you today, which means there's uh, oh, it's like this. Chris, the last time you went to a smorgasbord lunch or dinner with your significant spouse or, or uh, uh, your, your significant other or spouse, you probably, even though you know each other very well, each other knows each other's bad habits, good habits, etc. you spend a lot of time with each other. When you walked up to that table full of food with empty plates, invariably you came back with different things on your plate. Same thing with this program here today. Uh, I'll say something and Mary will say, oh, that's a great idea. I can use that. And then I'll say something else and Mary Wolf will say, well, that's not something I can use, but uh, this other idea you mentioned three minutes ago, that's something I can use. That's great. I wanna encourage you, just take what works for you, leave the rest on the table. But if you can walk out of it with one good idea that you can apply, then I've done my work, okay? So with that said, let's move ahead. 
quick a uh, little bit of additional information about me. I am a business consultant, trainer, coach. Do a lot of work with Target Training International using their assessments. Some of the clients I've used or have used me over the years. There's just a few of them. I, I try to use the local ones here for the most part. But uh, I just I tell you the reason I, I share all this with you is I originally got my bit my degree in Parks and Recreation Administration from good old Eastern Michigan University, which I still am on the board of directors for the Alumni Association today. And uh, when I got into that field, I really wanted to help people. Well, after about four years, I just recognized I wasn't doing as much for other people as I thought I could. So I changed careers, went to work for a training company. And from that point forward, I branched out on my own. But that's why I do what I do here today. That's why we're here today. And that is because I just want to help you go to the next level of your professional skill sets. If I can do that, then I think I'm doing the right thing, at least why I'm supposed to be here on the planet. Special bonuses for you here today. Uh, anyone that would like a free 20 minute consultation call to help you implement some of the ideas I talk about on this program today, feel free to do that. My information is on the bottom of that handout or that workbook we gave to you. Also, if you'd like, there's a free one year subscription to my monthly business report. If you'd like to request that again, just simply contact me. My email is there. And I would be happy to get you with those uh, one or both options, whatever you prefer. So today's purpose is to help you examine or re-examine your paradigms about making the most of a changing business environment. I know when we were chatting yesterday, Wes and I were discussing this program and, you know, for some companies, they've changed a lot. Some companies haven't changed that much and you know, some companies are kind of just in between there. So it's just pretty much up to you to do what you can to make the most of what's gonna be happening in the next 12 months. I, I think some companies will be impacted a lot. Others, like I say, really negligible and pretty much go back to the way they were. There'll be some changes certainly, but uh, I think for the most part, it just depends on your industry. It's interestingly enough, I don't know if you saw this, Wes or Chris, but I was just browsing through the, uh, Crane's business just came out yesterday and uh, they had done a pretty extensive uh, Whole, and they were finding out what business we're doing. I was preparing to take advantage of a post pandemic rebound. And it was, it's a pretty interesting article. I encourage you to take a look at that. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead. So, what I wanted to talk about first today was uh, Joel Barker. Uh, let me let someone else in here. Joel Barker is a futurist, been around for a while and uh, he has some great ideas that I want to share with you here today in a very short video clip, maybe a few minutes. But uh, what we'll do here is uh, we're going to start this in just a second. And in the meantime, uh, what I wanted to do uh, is if you want to just take notes on this, this would be helpful as he shares some things with us. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I'm going to walk over here and share the video so let's see what we got here back here okay so we'll uh, go right over to the chapter just about three or four examples he's going to give us and he's going to start out with a card deck which was his card deck and it's amazing take a very close look at these cards as he goes through them because the first few times i looked at it i had i had a problem seeing what he was talking about. But let's see what, how you can do on this one. Can you hear that all right? Can you hear that? No. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. One second. Just one second. I want. Oh my. Hold on one second, I'll see if I can stop this. Roll this back a little bit. Okay. Here we go. The way we see and understand the world. That I'd right? like to start with an experiment that similar now? to one that Thomas Kuhn cites in his book. I'm going to use elements that most of you know quite well. 
cards from a card deck. I'm going to show you eight cards very rapidly. I want you to identify each of these cards silently to yourself as I go through them. I'll give you two seconds between each card. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Good. Now, just in case you missed some, let's go through the cards again. To make it easier, I'm going to double the time. Okay, that's it. How many of you noticed something strange about these cards? For instance, the second card was a red spade, or that the fifth card was a black heart, or that the last card was another red spade. I know most of you missed these exceptions on the first run through, and many of you missed them on the second run through as well. Yet I'm also willing to bet almost all of you identified the legitimate cards the first time they came up. Why? Remember what I said about paradigms and how they filter data? Well, you were trying to see the cards the right way. And so you saw the legitimate cards very easily, very quickly. But your card deck paradigm also made it difficult to see the cards that didn't fit the rules. So instead of seeing them as they were, you distorted the black heart and the red spades to try to make them fit your paradigm. That's the paradigm effect in action. Now, it's easy to write off this experiment as a funny deck of cards and irrelevant to real life. So let's talk about paradigms in real life. Millions of adults around the world have adopted running as part of their fitness paradigm. Yet how many of them, how many of you, would be willing to go for a 70-mile run? Yes, I said run. Now, in Western culture, the words 70 miles and run just don't go together. 70 miles and drive, yes. Run, no. But in northern Mexico, 70 mile runs are common among the Tarahumaran Indians. They do it as part of a religious festival. Now, why is it so easy for them, yet so impossible for us? Because it's one of the Tarahumaran paradigms. They run everywhere for fun. Would you believe our ultimate race, the 26-mile marathon, is child's play for the Tarahumarans? Of course, you might want to argue that it's some kind of genetic difference, but I'm willing to bet if any one of you had been raised in one of their villages, you would run just like they do, because you would have learned their running paradigm. I brought you to Hennepin Technical College in Eden Prairie, Minnesota to show you another paradigm. This one has to do with automobiles. In 1976, during America's energy crisis, a group of students taught by Ernie Parker decided to build an energy efficient car. Let me give you the numbers. The car weighed 2,000 pounds. It went zero to 60 in less than 10 seconds. It got 77 miles per gallon, had a 16 horsepower engine. Today, 77 miles per gallon would be considered wonderful. You can imagine what that meant in 1976. But there's a catch. Anyone who knows anything about cars knows that those numbers don't add up. A 16 horsepower engine simply cannot accelerate a 2,000 pound car that quickly. Yet these students did exactly that. How? By utilizing a different paradigm. You see, the students weren't in an auto mechanics class. They were right here in the advanced hydraulics class. And they knew using their paradigm that they could capture and reuse energy ordinary cars waste. Let me show you how with this simple prototype. When this vehicle slows down, it doesn't use standard brakes. Instead, the front wheel turns a hydraulic motor pump and it pumps hydraulic fluid into this storage cylinder, capturing otherwise wasted energy while slowing down the vehicle. When this vehicle is stopped, its gas engine turns a pump that puts even more fluid into the cylinder. All that pressure is stored energy waiting to be used. Watch, I can accelerate without even starting the engine. 
So the acceleration comes not from the little gas engine, but all that pressure that's been stored in the cylinder. The job of the little engine is to hold the vehicle at speed, and it can do that getting more than 70 miles per gallon. So here's a question for you. If the students who designed that car had been in auto mechanics, do you think they could have even conceived it? I think the answer is no, because the piston engine paradigm does not provide for waste energy capture and storage. Now, I'm not suggesting this vehicle is the next automotive paradigm, but it does demonstrate a powerful principle. What may be impossible to do with the old paradigm may be easy to do with the new paradigm. In the late 1930s, an inventor was trying to interest corporations in his new idea. He brought it to the research department of a major photographic company. This is a model of the actual kit he used to demonstrate the process to one of their senior scientists. With little more than a box, a bright light, a specially coated metal plate, and some fine black powder, he created almost instantly and with no wet chemicals a very faint picture of a set of numbers. Now, we don't know exactly what the scientist said about all this, but we do know one thing for sure. He wasn't interested in that silly idea, so he showed the inventor to the door. But the inventor, Chester Carlson, had the last laugh. You see, what he invented was electrostatic photography, the Xerox process. Pity that poor scientist. He was unable to see beyond his paradigm, and as a result, Kodak missed one of the biggest business opportunities of the 20th century. Okay. So, what we're talking about is the business of paradigm. So we're gonna see how that works for us in our own situation here. So, with that work, work in hand, uh, I'm going to give you some answers here. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, documented. We all know this. It's just uh, bring it to your attention here. But many years ago, the railroad industry, which was the biggest game in town, was approached by the airline industry to partner. And the railroad people said, hey, listen, we're not interested. Planes are not going to be around a long time. It's a passing fad. We're in the railroad industry and that's all we're concerned with. Well, we know what happened afterwards because the railroad industry was upended by the airline industry along with the trucking industry. So what we're saying is they missed that paradigm. Uh, there are a few other companies that presently we still remember who missed a paradigm shift. Uh, companies like Kodak, Blockbuster Video, Sports Authority, Lord & Taylor, Toys R Us, Radio Shack, just to name a few. The market changed, they weren't expecting it, and of course, they're no longer with us. So, how about this? Perhaps, let's have a little fun here. I'd like you to match what industry is, what the business that they really are in on the right. So if you can take that, there should be a marking uh, device for you. There are the, uh, let me just, do something here. Uh, if you want to take your marker and uh, can you see it on your screen? The, uh, the, the little pen that you can use to draw on the screen. Does anybody see that? Uh, you know what? If you can, that's fine. If you can't, let's just do this uh, verbally. Uh, right now, if you were to take uh, the one the industries on the left, match them to the real purpose or whatever they really do on the right, here's how it would pan out. The railroad industry obviously is going to be in the transportation business. Uh, Weight Watchers, believe it or not, is in the business of hope. Insurance is in the business of peace of mind. Advertising is in the communication business. Tom, are you sharing something? Uh, I, I'm not. I'm just, can you see the screen? We see you. Oh, that'll, okay. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me, uh, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Can you see that? Not yet. Hold on. Let me go back. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. We need to share the screen. Okay. Back here. Can you see the screen now? There you go. Yes. Got it? Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Uh, so here's what we're doing. We're going to look at the business on the left, industry on the left, and match it up to the one on the right. So 
the way we can do that, as I was kind of walking through this, uh, many times like railroad industry, they didn't, they didn't know which business they were really in. They thought they were in the railroad industry. So really what they were in was the transportation business. You see that? Okay. Uh, Weight Watchers is actually in the business of hope. Insurance companies, they're actually in the business, I'm not insuring us, but they're actually in the business of peace of mind. Uh, the advertising business, they're in the business of communication. Shoe repair certainly is in the business of footwear. And here you go, car wash, that's in the business of, believe it or not, self-esteem. People want a clean car, it reflects on their own image, etc. So here's the question for all of us here today, is that we take a look at how the world is changing. What business are you really in? And if you think about that, you know, we have real estate represented here. Uh, you know, we have uh, restoration represented here today and a few others. And of course, Mary over at Eastern Michigan. Uh, but looking at your own business, that's, a, that's something you want to think about. And the way you look at that is what are we really doing for our, our clients or our people that we're servicing? So that's an important thing to think about. And that's your first homework assignment. Let me go back to this uh, actual slide just to show you the whole screen. There we go. Okay. So next point on your workbook there. Back to the program we were watching a few moments ago with Joe Barker. So what he was telling us in so many words is that a, prayer, a paradigm is our problem-solving system. That's how we, we fix problems in our business when we work with our clients. We solve their problems. What are, what are the paradigms we're using? I think this is what's changing in today's workplace as far as what we're looking at. What are the paradigms that we're using? Because those are the things we solve problems with. Now, frankly, number three, your company is not just one paradigm, but it's a collection of many paradigms. There's a lot of problem solving systems you have within your organization. So it's a matter of identifying them. So if you notice the red word I've highlighted here, that's what you want to write in on your workbook. That's, that's for your workbook answer page there. So paradigms actually, as Joe Barker mentioned, are psychological filters. You quite literally see the world through your paradigms. Any data that exists in the real world that does not fit your paradigm will have a difficult time getting through your filters. You're quite literally unable to see it right before your eyes. Just like those cards we were looking at, it's amazing you think about that. I mean, we were looking at a red spade. Doesn't make sense, but we were seeing it as normal. Well, uh, that's because we just couldn't see it. All right, uh, number five, with an outdated or ineffective set of paradigms, your business could be headed towards extinction. And we saw that with Kodak, we saw that with Toys R Us, we saw that with Blockbuster Video, et cetera. So question is for you is what types of uh, paradigms that are, are maybe outdated for you in your business. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's take a look at something else here. What's the reason for the logical sequence of these numbers? So everyone take a moment. There is a logical sequence, I assure you. Take a look at that sequence of numbers. Tell me what you see as a as the normal sequence they're showing us. As soon as you have it, just raise your hand or let me know that you you see it. Do you want an answer, Tom? Yes, please. Um, the, the, the in, in a three three number set, the second two numbers are um, sequentially um, reduced. Uh -huh. So there's, it's the number before. Okay. And then and eight seven six is also sequential backward. Uh huh. I don't right. know if that's enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other answers? I want you to know, you don't have to be a math major to know this one. Okay. Actually, the answer is they are in alphabetical order. Eight EI, right? Five FI, four FO, nine NI, seven SE, six SI, TH, 
TW, and Z. But you see what was happening? Your paradigm was trying to figure it out from the perspective of mathematics. Oh, there must be some way that these numbers add up to a certain amount or is it? No, that's how easy it is for our paradigms to, to get us in trouble. You see what I'm saying? Okay, let's go on to the next slide. So number six in your workbook, the way you see the world determines whether you react or respond to what you encounter. So over the last 12 months, many businesses and organizations have been reacting. Uh, some reacted, but then looked at the opportunities and responded. I know that article I mentioned to you here, Crane's, uh, they uh, talked about one company that quickly figured out that they were going to have to provide, they could provide these masks that people would be buying. So they had to figure out, okay, well, how are they going to make them? How are they going to ship them? How are they going to store them? So they responded. But unfortunately, many companies were doing more of the reacting and that was just putting them further behind. So in terms of your business, what have you been doing to respond to this last 12 months? And more importantly, what are you going to be doing to prepare for the next 12 months? Uh, they are predicting a real surge in businesses in the uh, area of travel, in the area of uh, restaurants. There's a pent up demand for these things and they will, they will come back pretty strong, uh, those that have survived so far. But uh, again, there's things that are gonna be changing here very soon. The two typical types of reactions by a business going through a market change are first thing they usually do is they speed up. They gotta do something really quick. They gotta make it happen. And then they typically find that they slow down because what they're doing to speed things up just isn't working the way they had hoped it would. So these are things that we need to keep in mind as far as our own business goes. So here's the question. Uh, what's the main goal for your organization over the next 12 months? So if you want to take a moment and jot that down. What is the main goal for your organization for the next couple months? I'm realizing there are going to be some changes. There's going to be hopefully some, uh, uh, barring we don't have a resurgence of the uh, COVID problem uh, and things move in a positive direction. What's the main goal for your organization for the next couple months? How are you going to take advantage of that? What are you going to do differently? What are you going to do this? Maybe go back to doing the same. That would be important to know. And as soon as you have the idea written down, just kind of look up at me and I'll know you're done. So Mary, what's one thing that, that, what's one of the main goals for your organization over the next 12 months? Go ahead, just leave yourself. Go ahead, there you go. Um, I, my goal is to establish additional relationships and be present as a trusted guy. Uh-huh, great, okay. Wendy, how about you? What, what, what's uh, one of your main goals for your organization? Um, so we need to retain uh, current students or, you know, our, our students at certain grade levels and attract new students. And Wendy, which, you're, which, uh, which school are you with? Uh, this is New School High, the yes. charter school. Yes, very good. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Mary, how about you over at Eastern Michigan? Well, for the university, um, you know, it's, in, it's um, making sure that our students are safe and uh, bringing more of them back on campus mm -hmm. in a safe manner. Yeah, and I know they've done a great job with that. One of the little examples for doing it properly. Uh, let's see here, Chris, how about you? What's one of the goals you have? I want to grow my business um, measurably, um, add a technician or two, but I, I, I want to make sure I do that in a structured way that doesn't lead to injuries uh, on the job. I, absolutely, thank you. Lynn, how about you? What, what are you guys planning over there at your, your business? 
focus is increasing our client count. Mm -hmm. And Lynn, you just for the rest of us, the business that you are in is? We're in staffing. We do specialized recruiting in staffing. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is so critical. I've seen that in the last 12 months, how important it's been. Okay, good. Uh, that's just fun, buddy. So good. So let's move ahead. Next one here. So presently, here's the question for you. What is the biggest challenge you're facing in your business or organization? Just go ahead and jot that down. What's the biggest challenge you're facing in your business or organization? As soon as you have that, just look up for me and know you're done. Okay, just quickly, uh, Chris, what's your biggest challenge you guys are facing over there? Um, I wrote down finding people that, that are the right fit for the job and for the company culture. It's it's not a glorious job or an easy one. Right, absolutely. Lynn, how about you? Which one of the bigger challenges you guys are facing there? It's actually the same in a way of, for Chris as Chris. Um, mm -hmm. Ours is finding people who, who you know are willing, wanting and willing to go to work. Oh, yeah. Good point. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's been difficult uh, with all the money that came down from the government to keep people out of work or to keep them right. at least. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to compete with that, quite frankly. Oh, sure is, sure is. Okay, how about, Wendy, how about your biggest challenge? Um, so I wrote down just kind of getting it all done with our current staffing, and it can be just even the day-to-day. -day. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just a challenge. Sure, I'll bet you. Mary, how about you? I think for Eastern, I think it's really the uncertainty because we can't, we can plan, uh, you know, to bring students back on campus and we do have a primary plan, but they also have a secondary plan because if things change, they have to revert to a different direction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, very good point. Thank you. Mary Wolf, how about you? I think it's an overall uneasiness or unknown mm -hmm. of the public really due to health, politics, economics, just an unsettled. Okay, good point. Well, these are things that are certainly gonna face you in the future. Let's take a look at the next one here. How about this? Identify one of the paradigms your company or organization used to have, but no longer found valid and changed it. So in every business that I've worked with, they all told me something about something they used to do and they found out, hey, this wasn't such a good idea and they changed it. What might have been one that happened in your organization? These questions are designed to make us think here. Mary Fallon, what's one what's one uh, paradigm that shifted over to Eastern within the last year, two years, five years, whatever it might have been? Um, I think <clears throat> I, I think um, their effort to move more classes online for students to take at various times, I think was a, a shift, you know, from the traditional student format mm -hmm. to more offering more online and, and alternative um, type class formats. Yes. Yeah. Great point. Great example. Great. Uh, let's see. Let's just take one more. Wendy, how about you? What was uh, one thing that you, you've changed over the last few years? 
Um, so um, it's something that I've seen and understood. I've only been here a couple years, but mm -hmm. um, the way in which uh, certain students receive special services mm -hmm. has changed. Um, the, instead of having the kids pulled out to receive those, um, the staff actually go into um, the gen ed, the general education of the regular uh, classrooms mm -hmm. um, and are there to provide support. So, so that's definitely been a, a paradigm shift um, for, for this organization. Okay, great. All right, well, we're gonna go to the next question here. We'll get some more responses, but how about this one? Identify one of your, of the current paradigms within your company or organization that needs to change and why. So just to think about it, now what's, based on everything that's happened, maybe even before everything happened, what's the paradigm that you're aware of in your industry, in your company that needs to change and why? But it hasn't happened yet, we know. But what is it? why does it need to change? As soon as you have one, just let me know by looking up towards the camera here. Um, I can I can go. This is Lynn. Please, Lynn. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm actually going to <laughs> tap into question 10 or you know, point number 10 uh -huh. and then the other to 11. Sure. So one of the things that our company has done is um, with thank goodness and timing, you know, of the, of the pandemic, our philosophy is really, you know, we offer people good jobs and for us, it's all about the interaction with our associates, with the, the people that we place at our client sites. So it's connecting, making sure that we, you know, that um, we understand what they're really looking for, the culture, you know, the company they want to work for, those kinds of things. So we would bring everyone into our office for an in-person interview um, and go through that process. Through the pandemic, we obviously weren't allowed to do that. So everything for us you went virtual. And what's interesting about that, it was very much against our company's paradigm. And yet most companies do things virtually um, to make it easier for, you know, for people. So we transitioned into that. We do um, our interviews either via phone or Skype. Mm -hmm. um, our onboarding, which is, you know, I9s, uh, W4s, those things are are largely done um, through EDOCs. And so that's where we have come. Um, the other thing, I think the paradigm for us now um, where, we're, where we still need to go is we still have some documents that we do not do um, virtually. And that would be like an I-9. And so those things, you know, are, are I would just say that's the thing that we would need to change. Okay. Um, we really, yeah, our company has sort of made that transition um, through the pandemic. And uh -huh. I'm very grateful for that. Excellent. Great example. I appreciate that. Chris, how about you? What's, what's one that, paradigm that needs to change within your company that you realize now? You know, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't come easy to, to me to, to think about what some of these might be. Um, but my first, my first instinct is to really, it's this paradigm around compensation or pay. Mm -hmm. We really need to get our heads around um, total compensation, um, um, career path and growth. And, um, you know, find people that want to be entrepreneurs and grow a business versus somebody that's just looking for a paycheck. Uh huh. Good point. Great, great point. Those can definitely affect the way you approach running your business months and years to come. Okay, very good. Well, let's move ahead. So here's something that's kind of a, a thought starter. If you keep on doing what you've always done, now we all, we all know the old saying, 
you keep on doing drawings done, you keep on getting what you always got. Well, that's not true anymore. Uh, what's happening now, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you will get less than what you always got because things are changing. The world has changed and continues to change. Our competitors are changing. So we need to change as well. So that's something to keep in mind when you start to look to the future here. There's no question about it. We've got to change. So number 13, don't be surprised by trouble. This is a famous quote from J. Paul Getty, great oil man back in the early part of the 1900s. Uh, if you think about it, we can look at our business. We can look at the economy. There's always been problems off and on. It just like it just keeps coming. So I guess if that's the, the normal, that we're going to have disruptions, we're going to have challenges, problems, and they're not going to go away. They might go for a short time and then they'll come back, something else will replace it. Uh, then let's not be surprised by trouble. If we structure our business in that respect, we'll be more proactive as opposed to reactive. And we'll just be in a better place as we move through the years that come. So number 14, here's a good one. When things aren't working, back to this business of paradigms, if our paradigm's not working, then change your tactics. If things aren't working, then look for a different way to do it. Don't wait for things to go back to the way they used to be because unfortunately, probably never ever gonna go back to the way they were exactly like before. So be proactive, change your tactics. This is critical. Remember this, the size of the problem is never the issue. What matters is how you respond. We saw in this pandemic how some restaurants were just literally immobilized. Where others went right to work, they created an opportunity for themselves by figuring out delivery, uh, figuring out how to promote themselves, and they did fairly well. So I guess we can see that in many different types of businesses, how they responded or they reacted, and that has certainly affected how they succeeded or not succeeded. Okay. About this. So here's some basics for changing your paradigms. Four different things you can do. One, stop doing some things. So if you want to write that down in your workbook, stop doing some things, whatever that might be, that's causing you to go fall farther behind. Then start doing some things and identify what are some things that need to start happening? What do I need to start doing? And of course, number three, do more of some things. So you're already doing some things right. We just need to do more of that more consistently. And then of course, do less of some things. And I still need to do them, but you don't need to do them as often. And that makes a huge difference in the long run. Okay, so let's move ahead. Uh, remember, your perception is your reality. Uh, how we look at the last 12 months depends on your own perception. And some people, like this one gentleman here on the left, he said, boy, it's, that's, this animal has a very pointed beak. Well, it's only because he's blind and he's feeling one part of it. This gentleman here thinks, oh, it's like a hose. This one's, oh, it's like a, it's like a thick canvas. He's rubbing the ear. And so it goes. You know, it just depends how you look at things. And remember, what you look for, what you see is what you're going to get. What you see is what you're going to get in so many ways. All right. So let's look at number 18. I might share a little formula for you here in just a moment, but why do we resist change? Well, here's the answers, answers I've received from the people I've done these programs for. One, it's unfamiliar. We resist change naturally because it's unfamiliar. People like to go back to the familiar. We may not go back to the exact the way it was 12 months ago, but recognize that's a form of resistance. It's not convenient to change. You know, when something comes along, hey, you know, it means we have to update our, our uh, phone system or we have to update our computer system or we have to do more things on online and it's just not convenient huh it's a resistance form of resistance next it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah, people just don't like to be uncomfortable so they'll avoid that it's a hassle you know it's just a hassle it just creates more work for us okay and what's another one we're just not sure how to deal with it and quite frankly that's what causes the most stress is this one down here we are not sure how to deal with the situation when change comes around. And that causes more companies to procrastinate, to, to freeze, to do anything but take action. So that's the number one 
challenge, I think, for most companies is that they're not sure how to deal with it. And so they are paralyzed by simply trying to analyze it. Okay, so let's take a look at something else. Most times people prefer comfortable problems versus uncomfortable solutions. Interesting note. People say, well, I can live with this. It's a pain in the butt, but I can live with it. Well, if that's what's gonna work for you, it's, I can guarantee you in the long run, you're gonna be paralyzed. So look for those uncomfortable solutions because they're definitely gonna move you ahead. Definitely move you ahead. So let's see one more thing I wanna share with you. Oh. Uh, mission statement. So here's one thing I recommend for every business organization to do right now. Go back and look at your company's mission statement. You know, why do you do what you do? Uh, you know, we know with uh, Disney, they know what they do. Uh, their, their business is to entertain, inform, and spark people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling, reflecting the iconic brands, creative minds, innovative technologies that make ours the world's premier entertainment company. That's what they're revisiting now, certainly as they're trying to cope with this pandemic and that has affected them as well. But what about you and your company? Go back to that mission statement. Take a look. Maybe it's time to rewrite it. Maybe it's time to revisit it and tweak it a little bit. So this is a good place to start because that's why you do what you do. That's what the mission statement is. And the way I simplified things is when you think about your mission statement, just answer the five whys. So why? Why do you do what you do? Why is that? Why? 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 And why? You'll come up with some really good answers there. So I do a lot of work with my clients when we work with them on their mission statements. We just dive into it. Now, to simplify things, the vision, that's where you're going. So I like to use the analogy. Your mission statement would be like the engine in your car, Chris. So that's that's the uh, thing that drives your, your vehicle forward. But the headlights, that would serve as your vision. So the vision for your company is where is your company headed? The engine's going to drive it there. That's the mission. But the vision is going to be where it's headed. That's important to write to look at now. Where is your headed? Where, where's your company headed? Uh, based on what we've seen in the last 12 months, what's the potential in the next 12 months? Let's uh, get our vision refined. All right. So here's something to think about when it comes to how we do change. And we've seen different examples of this over the years, but uh, this is something I got from Cop Kotmeyer. Uh, will he explain change? So here's pretty much how we all go through change. Uh, first thing is over here in the right upper right hand corner, we have to admit that's the first part of the four steps for going through a change. Admit that the change has happened. Oftentimes people will say, the first thing's out of the mouth, I can't believe it. I don't believe this. These are instinctive words that come out of our brain because we're having a problem admitting something's actually happened. Second step we have to go through to get to the next part of this formula is to accept it. You know, accept that the change has happened and welcome it with open arms. So when this pandemic hit, okay, first we had to admit it. Second, we had to accept it. All right. All right. It's actually happening. It's not going to go away. Uh, we're going to have to wait for a vaccine, et cetera, et cetera, but have to accept it. Next part of that is adapt. So come up with a plan to help you adapt. That's where I encourage people to go back to that mission statement. Take a look at that what vision, where you're going to be heading. Come up with a plan on help, helping you cope with and deal with, and maybe take advantage of the situation. Absolutely. And then, of course, the last part here is the action. Get into action. Take the necessary action to ensure that you get those desired results. So that's a great formula for thinking about it. And we all go through this in, in different stages. Now, some people are quick to get through the admit and accept stage, but hard to come up with a, a plan. Uh, others are able to go right to the action stage, and you'll see you're seeing that right now with the business that are businesses that are responding to this last 12 months. Some have done very well with it, some have done very poorly with it, and some are right in the middle. So, with that said, how about this? Jot down the best idea that you picked up here today that you can use. Just jot that down in your workbook or on a sheet of paper that you have there. And as soon as you have that, just look up and we'll go around real quick. Everybody will share just the one idea they got that they can use. And we'll go from there. So Mary Wolf, what was the best idea you picked up there? Well, there's a few, but perception is your reality. That's mm -hmm. just so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Wendy, how about you? Um, honestly, I think your um, first question of what business are you really in and the whole idea of not 
defining yourself by your sector or your industry, but really thinking differently about the industry. And then that's really a shift, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make that sort of mental shift, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then like you're talking about mission and vision, um, my note to myself is to sort of take this worksheet, honestly, to our strategic planning discussion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and see, see what comes out of that discussion as a small group. Great idea. Great idea. Lynn. Thank you. Chris, how about you? If Chris is still there. Okay. Lynn, how about you? Um, I have a couple things, Tom. Um, I would say uh, I loved the slide. Most uh, times we prefer comfortable problems mm -hmm. versus uncomfortable solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could see where I could use that with my team, you know, moving forward when we're trying to, you know, adjust to things or make changes. Um, the other thing that was good, I think, for me is we do have our mission and our team values, but maybe just reviewing that. Um, and just where is our team head or our company headed? I mean, I, I think Rod and I know, but I think it's important that our, our team, you know, that we're really clear in communicating that with our team. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I also, uh, lastly, I did like your that last slide, you know, admit, accept, adapt in action. Um, you know, I think it's it's difficult managing in, um, you know, in, a, <laughs> in these times. And so just continually accepting, you know, admit, accept, adopt in, in action, I think it's just a great reminder daily. Great point. So yeah, Lynn, you. that's, you're welcome. And it's so important because it is it's true. People get stuck something, one of these, and it's important to know where are you? And if you know where you're at, okay, then you can come up with a, a plan to get the heck out of that stage and get to the next stage. But you're right on the money with that. Sometimes it's hard to admit that. Thank you. Chris, are you still there? Okay, that's fine. Let's move ahead. Uh, so, bonus for 10 today's program, free 20 minute consultation. If you want to discuss some of these ideas, how to implement them in your organization, be happy to help you with that. Uh, no obligation. That's all we, we'll just discuss that not only. Uh, if you'd like to have a one year subscription to my monthly business report, just email me. I'll be happy to get you on that. It comes out every month, second Tuesday of the month, with some solid ideas. Just help you grow your mind and grow your uh, actions that you might be able to participate in with your business. So final closing thoughts here is, uh, the, well, before I close it up with this one, any questions? we got about another two minutes. Any questions for me at this point? Oh, Mary, did you, I, I think we missed you. What, did, what was the one idea that you picked up here today? Sorry. Mary that's Dallas. okay. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I can't, you know, make a decision for the university. I can look at it from the segment that I work with. So I, I was thinking, um, really kind of reviewing the, the items that you covered, because as they all said, there's, you know, there were a lot of items in there, but I think too, um, determining, you know, what those last, the very last four that you mentioned, but also the four steps to changing. Uh -huh. you know, so what, what can you do more of? What can you do less of? So really kind of going through my own activities for my part of my job and seeing, you know, how, what do I need to adjust to be more efficient in what I'm doing? Absolutely. And that's so critical, especially at a university, because yeah, I know, we know that they're a little slower to change in some cases. In some cases, they're not. I think we can set an example for many organizations, how they change with this pandemic. But okay, well, with that said, let's just close it up. So there's a little poem I once read, and I, I really like it. Life can't give you joy unless you really will. Life just gives you time and space. It's up to you to fill it. That's what we have. All right, so with that said, I'll say thanks again for being part of our program today. I hope there's some ideas here that you can take out and put to work. If there is some help I can offer your organization, let me know. Uh, if there's other organizations you're part of that could use a speaker or a webinar, let me know. I'd be happy to help them out as well. But with that said, I want to say thank you for being here today, and I look forward to seeing you around. Thank you very much, Tom. Thanks, you're Tom. You're welcome, everyone. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tom. See you later. Bye-bye.